It's now time for Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. It began as a podcast, went live on the net, and transformed into a full-blown empire. It's the only daily boxing talk show on the planet, hosted by the only guy with the balls to do it. Many have stepped into the ring. Many have tried to take the belt. And one by one, they've fallen. Another victim of the undisputed heavyweight champion of Boxing Talk Radio. Talking Boxing with Billy C is on now. My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious, I want your heart. Coming to you live from the Billy C Studios in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Calagero. It's time for the Billy C Show. Good morning, good day, good evening. Whenever you listen, I hope you're doing all right today. Special shout out to all of our semi-new viewers on uh, Holyfield Television. Uh, we're glad to be part of Holyfield TV sports programming, and we want to hear from you. So if you're uh, watching on uh, Holyfield TV, uh, drop us an email, Billy at Talkin' Boxing. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. And uh, don't forget about downloading our app. You can do it real easy. Just go to Fight TV. That's F-I-T-E, fight.tv slash Billy C. Download our app. And watch or listen to the show on your handheld. Today's show is She's a Bina brought to you in a part by Sal's Neighborhood Pizzeria and Italian Restaurant located on beautiful St. Simons Island in Georgia. Check out the website www.salsneighborhoodpizzeria.com or give my man a call 912-268-2328, 912-268-2328. And uh, don't forget if you're heading north or south on I-95, you can swing by Sal's. Uh, and enjoy a, a great meal. Uh, it's a 15-minute detour. That's it, 15. That's stopping for light. So if you run them, you get there quicker. And don't forget, Sal's Neighborhood Pizzeria and Italian Restaurant has some clean, beautiful bathrooms. So if you're on I-95, you know what I'm talking about, right? Check out the website, www.salsneighborhoodpizzeria.com. Today's show is also being brought to us in part by Gawk Box. What is it? Check it out because you can save uh, money plus get stuff for free and help us out. So what's better than a two-way street, right? Sign up today. Get an account. Just visit our website, billycboxing.com, and click on the Gawk Box banner. Today's show is also being brought to us in part by the Turning Stone Resort and Casino and their next uh, boxing event, which is taking place on uh, Friday night, June 9th. It's part of the Hall of Fame weekend. I'm going to be ringside. I want you to be there. So uh, get yourself some tickets. Just visit our website, billycboxing.com, and click on the Turning Stone banner, which is a fight poster, actually. And finally, today's show is being brought to you in part by my book, Tom Molino, From Bondage to Baddest Man on the Planet, is available right now where all good books are sold. And you can literally get a copy of it right now by visiting uh, amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com. If you want to get a signed copy, just visit our website, billycboxing.com, and click on the book. Can't miss it. It's right there on the front page. Um, yesterday we had uh, a power failure uh, right as we started uh, doing the show. And uh, ultimately, uh, we're not, uh, we weren't able to finish the show. Um, we couldn't even get the show back started. You know, uh, with all of this uh, newfangled equipment, uh, it just, uh, you know, uh, it crapped the bed. Let's just say that. But uh, we apologize for any inconveniences. Uh, but we want to pick up where we left off. And uh, the main topic uh, today, we're going to have Dax Khan stop by a little bit. Um, the main topic today was the, uh, or yesterday, which is bleeding into today, was the uh, fight results from this past weekend, specifically um, the, uh, the sucker punch that Andre Durrell's uncle um, laid on... Uh, uh, Jose, now I, 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 there's so many different ways I've heard his last name 
pronounced. So I'm just going to refer to him as Jose, okay? Because, I, I you know, he's taken enough uh, uh, punishment uh, both in and out of the ring and even in the ring when the fight was over. I mean, I, I don't want to disrespect him by, by mispronouncing his name fully. So uh, let's just refer to him as Jose. And Andre Durrell's uncle, uh, Leon Lawson Jr., sucker punched him uh, right at the uh, after the fight was over. The 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 disqualification uh, that Jose uh, hit uh, Andre Durrell after the bell. I think that that was controversial in itself. Uh, referee Bill Clancy disqualified um, Jose for hitting after the bell. He was warned earlier in the fight. Uh, however, I felt that the punch uh, did definitely uh, uh, occur after the bell. However, when the bell rang, he had uh, he was in the middle of a two-punch combination. The first punch had already landed, and I believe, especially after the luxury of watching uh, the replays, I believe that the second punch was on its way. So I don't even believe that it should have been a disqualification. In my opinion, uh, maybe a, a point or even two uh, deducted. And then uh, if Andre Durrell couldn't have continued, uh, then uh, then go to the scorecards. Now, what we also got to see uh, was video of his corner yelling at him to stay down after he appeared to be able to get up uh, okay, you know, and then he laid back down. Um, not happy about that whole uh, situation. And uh, the worst part was the sucker punch by uh, Leon Lawson Jr. Uh, walks over, and this was after Andre Durrell had already, uh, you know, shook hands with Jose, uh, telling him, hey, it's cool. And uh, uh, Dawson walks up, he's talking to the other cornerman, and then just sucker punches, clear as day, bully, punk, BS sucker punch, uh, lands flush on the jaw, of Jose, and then uh, and then all hell breaks it loose. And speaking of all hell, joining me right now uh, with uh, sleep still in his eyes uh, is my man. He's a uh, New Jersey Boxing Hall of Famer. Uh, he's a Guinness Book of World Record holder. He's a restaurateur, and he's my uh, really close friend. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, please welcome the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend himself in his own mind, Sal Rocky Santa Cola. What's up, Sal? Billy, good morning. How are you, buddy? Wow, you you just blew my headset apart. You're, uh, uh, you're, you're kind of loud today, Sal, but, <laughs> but thank God I have governors uh, on our uh, output, so you didn't uh, destroy everybody else's. But uh, governors, uh, what are you bringing politics into? No, no, no. You see, you know what happened last time we tried that. But uh, <laughs> forget uh, about it. Anyway, you know we're talking about what we tried to talk about yesterday, and uh, um, you know the, the sucker punch after the fight. Uh, you know after the fight was over, it was 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 terrible as um, as far as I know. Uh, he was uh, charged. Uh, by the Maryland uh, State Police, uh, uh, two charges, actually, and there's a warrant for his arrest. Now, uh, as we start the show today, I still am not uh, aware of if he got um, uh, picked up or not, turned himself in, assault in the first degree, assault in the second degree. What was your thoughts on that incident? I, I'll tell you, I, I was re-watching it this morning, earlier this morning, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe out of left field was his left hook, and so... Boom. Just just out of out of the blue. And it put him down. It hurt. And man, I'll tell you, it's not called for. It should never have happened. And it's just it's just a poor, poor display of uh sportman sport, lack thereof sportsmanship and just just hostility. It, it, the guy the guy should be locked up. Yeah, well, hopefully uh he will uh be locked up. Now as far as the DQ itself, Sal. You know, I had a chance yeah. to rewatch it, and 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 all due respect to Bill Clancy, the referee, and and I know Bill personally. Uh, he helped us uh, uh, do some promotion uh, down in the Carolinas years ago. But um, you know, in all due respect to him, you know, he didn't get the benefit of a replay or anything. But but we have, and I've watched it, and I think that the DQ was actually um, maybe a little premature. I, I do agree that the the punch did come after the bell, but I also think that um, Jose was in the middle of throwing at least a two-punch combination. Not that, you know, a fighter could always say, hey, I was in the middle of throwing a nine-punch combination when the bell rang. I mean, they do have to control themselves. They do. But he doesn't understand any English. 
Uh, he was warned, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, what was your thoughts on the DQ itself? I agree with you. I, I thought me that that might have been a little excessive. Uh, you know, there were other things. You know, you get caught up with the heat in the moment. You know, you're making the decision. You're doing this. You're doing that. And you see something. Sometimes it's, instead of uh, being proactive and assessing and, and making a different call, you're reactive. And you say, ah, you know, he, boom, no more. That's it. Boom. You make a snap judgment. And I think, unfortunately, that's what may have happened in this, uh, this case here. Because uh, I'm sure, and I shouldn't say this, I'm not Clancy, but uh, he may have uh, had second doubts of, of that after the issue. But the bottom line is, you're human. You snap, make a snap judgment like that. You got, you're going to live with it. And that's what he's going to live with. That's what everyone's going to live with. Yeah. Well, you know, it seemed like he was a little agitated um, by Jose to begin with, and maybe that agitation caused him to uh, to do what he did. I mean, True. you know, at, at the end of the day. Um, Andre Durrell and his whole team uh, has has really, uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to use the word. They've use disc- it. They've dis- <laughs> use it, Billy C. <laughs> uh, they've disgraced boxing um, with, with that kind of uh, action. Uh, now, first of all, his brother, Anthony Durrell, who, uh, who, who's also a pro fighter, you know, uh, he they may press charges on him. He 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 kind of threw a security guard to the ground, and then the other brother who was up uh, sitting in the, the stands, you know, who uh, looks like he makes a, a living uh, <clears throat> selling crack or something. Uh, you know, he's fighting his way trying to get down. I I, I mean, it's just very unprofessional from a a a, a boxing team. You know, I, first of all, boxing. It, it, people are against it to begin with because of the nature of the sport, Sal. But to to add this, I mean, the, the, you know, these this this gets I told you so from the people that aren't into it. I mean, don't you think that if you're a professional fighter and you're part of a, a professional fighters team, that you kind of got to act accordingly, you know, like professional and and control yourself? I mean, uh, to me, that comes with the job. Billy, uh, it it does. I mean, that's the that's the territory. That's what you do. I mean, you're you're aligned with a with a uh, with a fighter, and you know you you have to conduct yourself as as, as such. And you know you're not supposed to can be a loose cannon. You know you got to be a little more contained. You got to be a little uh, less emotional and uh, let your actions uh, speak. And you know you you've got to do those things. And and each corner should understand that. That's the that's the tentacles of, of, of how far the reach is that, you know, hey, guess what? We're in this together. Uh, yeah, I might be fighting, but hey, you know what? You're a reflection of, of, of me. And, uh, you know, maybe behave yourself and, uh, and uh, you know, watch how you uh, watch your actions. You know, that, it, it should be part of that territory. And it's understood. You know, I, I also understand, you know, with, with strategy. And, you know, with uh, Durrell's corner telling him to stay down, they, they know the rules. Uh, you know, they knew that the punch came after the bell. And, you know, in, in boxing in all, and in all sports and really in life, Sal, you know, being as old as we are, I've learned <laughs> one thing. You know, the easy way out sometimes isn't the best way out. And for people that constantly look for an easy way out, cutting corners uh, in 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 life or or in this case in in boxing ends up uh, you know st- shooting yourself in the foot and uh, you know no no uh, no offense to Plexico Burris but uh, uh <laughs> you know the the truth of the matter is is that you know trying to look for an easy way out and and he did win an interim title because of that DQ um, I, I think the ramifications now and the outrage that uh, people seem to, to have over this incident, and Dax will be coming on a little bit later and give us uh, an update on uh, social media. I think he didn't win at all. I, I think it's kind of the latter. I think he lost. What do you think? No, I think so, too, because, you know, what? here we are. We had a whole weekend full of some entertaining fights, some good, good contests. And uh, here we are talking about this guy and about the sucker punch and about the ramifications of that and uh, versus of, uh, you know, the, the actual fight itself and, uh, you know, what, what happened during that fight. So here we are talking about this. 
it's uh, it's a little bit uh, unbelievable of what the the, the, the news, uh, how it carries, it takes on its own life, and here we are talking about a sucker punch. It's it's incredible. Yeah, as far as the fight itself, uh, I felt that uh, Jose was uh, breaking Andre down. I I think uh, both Durrells are extremely overrated. Although I will give Andre Durrell uh, a lot of credit. He's a defensive. Uh, uh, fighter, you know, he's he's very hard to hit. He's got uh, clearly he's got athletic ability uh, that uh, transcends uh, in the ring. Uh, a quality fighter, but I think he was on his way to getting stopped. I listen, that's just my opinion. Uh, and um, you know where he goes from here, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, very uh, disappointed uh, in the outcome of that fight and also the call. Oh yeah. As far as the main event of that card, uh, Gary Russell Jr. Um, stopped uh, Oscar Escondon via a seventh-round uh, TKO uh, to improve to 28 wins, one loss with 17 knockouts. Uh, Escondon dropped to 25-3 uh, and three with 17 uh, knockouts. Uh, I think uh, Gary Russell uh, is a quality fighter, and, and uh, as far as the featherweight division, uh, among the top, I, I would like to see him you know, fight another top, top guy. Escondon, no disrespect to him, but very limited, uh, tough guy, strong, uh, can take a beating, which uh, he demonstrated. But uh, I would love to uh, uh, see uh, uh, Gary Russell Jr. fight a little more often and uh, maybe with uh, some better opposition. Hey, Sal, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about the rest of the fights that took place over the weekend uh, and then some other news. Uh I can't believe what, what I'm hearing uh, from Floyd Mayweather camp. Uh, so so I, I just, you know, we'll get to that hopefully a little bit later. But uh, don't go anywhere because uh, we're going to take a short break, Sal. And uh, you can go, uh, you know, brush your get teeth, coffee. do what you got to do. And uh, we'll be back uh, in about uh, two minutes, guys. So uh, Thanks, buddy. Uh, we'll be back in two. Billy C. We'll be right back. Endless pools are an incredible alternative to traditional pools, making it easy and inexpensive to swim at home. Exercise year-round against a smooth current set to your desired pace and temperature. With our new underwater treadmill, you can walk or run without stressing your joints. Endless pools are simple to install and even simpler to maintain. The water stays crystal clear with almost no chlorine. Call for your free idea kit and experience the freedom of swimming at home. Snacking has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks, like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to Graze.com, enter the code ENJOY36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to Graze.com for your first box free. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-290-8300. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now, or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts. Why are you doing that to my face? I hate you. I hate you. That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. Now back to Billy C. Interact with the show at BillyCBoxing.com. And we're back. You're listening to The Billy C. Show. Uh, glad you could join us. Special shout out to uh, all of our viewers on Holyfield Television. Uh, we want to hear from you, man. Drop us an email. Billy at Talkin Boxing. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. Don't forget uh, tomorrow, our blast from the past, uh, Nicolino Loche. Uh, as uh, requested by uh, one of you guys. And uh, we take our uh, 
a blast from the past suggestions. So uh, if you have one in mind, drop me an email. Um, some of the other fights that uh, uh, took place over the weekend, uh, I, 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 before the Gary Russell Jr., and I'm joined here with uh, my man uh, uh, Sal uh, Rocky Senecola, and uh, before that, uh, live from England, we got to see Javante Davis uh, take uh, take out Leon Wall, Sal. And, um, I, I mean, it was a third-round knockout, uh, two minutes and 11 seconds uh, of that third round. And, and to be honest with you, giving credit what credit's due, Sal, I think uh, Javante Davis uh, showed me, at least uh, for a junior lightweight, he's among the best in the division. What do you think? Well, not only a junior lightweight, but, I mean, a, a very young junior lightweight. I mean, I, I'll tell you what. I, I was talking about a Friday, you know, when we were going into the weekend. You know, this guy, you know, he he's he's full of himself. He's cocky. He's this and that. But let's get, let's get one thing straight. That's great. That's what you want to see on some level, a fighter with confidence that's ready to toot his horn to show that he is going to back up what he – claims with his actions and that's what he did this guy's a great young prospect no he's a young star i'm telling you he's a young star and ho hopefully he could be cultivated and, and 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 brought along at a pace that he doesn't get too far ahead of himself he did exactly what he said he was going to do he uh for his age he showed maturity uh i love what he said after the fight uh i'm very excited about this guy I really am. He he's a good talent, and uh, I wish him many many years of years and years of success. You know, I I agree with you, and, and I will tell you something. We were hard on him with the ego uh, last week, and he, he he clearly has an ego. I mean, uh, he's cocky and everything else. But the one thing that I noticed, aside from Floyd Mayweather trying to take all, all the spotlight away from the kid, and and I'm I'm telling you right now that that's going to get old. This kid is going to wake up, um, you know, in the future at some point and say to himself, I want to be me. I, I, want, to, I want to be Javante Davis. I don't want to be the, the protege of Floyd Mayweather. I mean, every time Floyd Mayweather is in the picture, you know, he's talking about himself. And he, he tries to deflect it and bring it back. Yeah, he to did. David. He did. Yeah, but, but, but not in a sincere, at least in my opinion, not in a sincere way. But let me say this about Javante Davis. Not only did he display extremely fast hands which he we've we've seen it he's got punching power he's aggressive he goes yes, in for the is. kill he's not afraid to engage no. i like that that's what makes fighters great and i say this because you know there obviously floyd mayweather is a great fighter and he doesn't do any of that he doesn't engage. He doesn't go in for the kill. You know, I got some loser uh, on, on in the YouTube community trying to tell me he's a knockout guy and all of this stuff. He's not. You know, he was early in his career at the lower weights when he had to fight a couple of real fights. But then he, when he got safety first, he, he didn't try to knock anybody out. And as a result, you don't remember his fights. Javante Davis has a chance to be one of those memorable fighters, the fighters that you remember. The fight. Oh, did you see him fight Leon Watts? Oh, did you remember this fight? Oh, well, he moves in and, and goes for the kill. But the other thing that I noticed was that despite his arrogance, um, you know, he did show respect, Sal. He did. He went over. He did. Not only did he show respect to Leon Walsh, he showed respect to the whole team of Leon Walsh yes he did and to me that 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 shows me there's some hope for this kid uh in the long run and and I I think he's a talent I think we need to keep our, our eyes on this guy what do you think I think you are 100% correct and that's that's why I'm excited to watch this guy he's a he's a talent not to be questioned and I think he's gonna grow and be uh, better and become better and better and like I said for his young age I feel he's pretty, uh, pretty much already poised, and and uh, he was very humble post fight, you know, very much, uh, you know, I I, I know uh, not everyone agrees, but he uh, he he, you know, displayed a sense of maturity and appreciation, and that's what I liked about him. He actually seemed like he appreciated where he was because he knew it take it took hard work for him to get there. And he appreciated it, and that's what it showed. And you know, he was uh, grateful to God, grateful to everybody. I mean, the uh, the the he was humble in the end, and I think he was uh, 
he's he's a good man. I like him, and I'm going to follow him, and I'm going to wish him the very best in a, in a stellar career ahead of for him. Also, uh, on Saturday night, we got to see uh, Terrence Crawford do what Terrence Crawford does, uh, dominate an opponent. Uh, this time, uh, Felix Diaz uh, was dominated uh, until uh, uh, the fight was stopped in the 10th round. Uh, Diaz Corner uh, stopped the fight. Uh, Joel D- Diaz is the trainer. Um, and they could have uh, stopped that fight even sooner. Uh, Terrence Crawford uh, is a smart fighter. He-, he showed us Saturday that not only is he a smart fighter, he, this guy is, uh, he breaks down a fighter textbook. I, I mean, he just breaks down a fighter um, and, uh, and wins. And, you know, I love Terrence Crawford. He's got a chance to unify uh, that division, the junior welterweight division, uh, by, uh, by fighting Indongo. They each have two of the belts. I, in my opinion, that should be his next move and then possibly move up. Uh, we haven't had a undisputed uh, champion in, in, in a division for a while, especially the 140-pound division. I think it's a very winnable fight for Crawford. Uh, he could have the fight in Nebraska, do very well financially, uh, and then uh, uh, move up. Uh, he was already talking about possibly uh, moving up uh, as it is now. He mentioned uh, uh, Keith Thurman, uh, which uh, we'll get to a little bit later because that fight's not going to happen. I, I personally think Terrence Crawford is the best 140-pounder out there right now, and um, he should uh, he should unify that division and uh, and then move up. What do you think, Sal? I think that's a great send off for him because I think he uh, he's so accomplished, he's so thorough in in what you just said he was doing. He's he breaks your opponent down, he assesses what he needs to do, and he's he's constantly calculating and making the right moves. So I I, I like this guy. He does a great job, and uh, you know when he uh, beats everybody in the division, unifies the titles and everything else. What more is going to be left for him to do, other than moving up a little bit? No, no. I, I, I agree. Uh, also on that card, uh, Ramundo Beltran scored a knockout of knockouts over Jonathan Masilio uh, in, uh, in their fight to give him uh, another shot, possibly, at a world title. He improves to 33-7 and seven with a draw with 21 knockouts. Uh, Masilio drops to 25-3. and three. Uh, One minute and 25 seconds of, of the official time. Uh, Masilio was knocked out cold, Sal. What, what did you think of that knockout? Well, and that was not a sucker punch. <laughs> that, was, that was, man. Let me tell you, he delivered that shot, bam, and uh, it was it was lights out, lights out. Great display of power, great display of of, of putting away an opponent, and uh, you know, fortunately, uh, everything uh, hopefully is working out all right for uh, his opponent, who had to wake up uh, to the to the uh, to the knowledge of him losing the fight. But uh, I'll tell you what, no, it was a great left hook, great uh, great way to end the fight. And also, uh, just uh, we didn't get to see it on the televised broadcast, but Shakira Stevenson out of New Jersey. We heard our man Larry Hazard talk about this kid. Um, he yes. did uh, do well uh, in the Olympics. He won a silver medal for the United States. He improved to 2-0 and with a knockout when he scored a first-round knockout over Carlos Suarez, who drops to 6-4-2 uh, and two with one knockout. Two minutes and 35 seconds uh, was the official time uh, for that one. Um, just, a, uh, we got some other fights I, I want to talk about. Um, but, um, and by the way, um, the, uh, the other fight that, uh, uh, took place, uh, which I didn't mention, uh, with the Gary Russell was, uh, uh, was the fight, uh, with Rancis Barthelemy. Um, what a robbery, uh, Kyriel, uh, Relika, um, got robbed in this fight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, they give a unanimous decision. 116-110, um, you know, uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, 116-110 uh, was the way one judge saw it, uh, one judge saw it, 115-111, and a third saw it, 117-09, uh, all wow. in favor of Barthelemy, which I, I don't know what fight they were watching, really. Uh, he was he was backing up. Uh, the harder shots clearly uh, were landed by Relika. Uh, I, it's a travesty that, uh, that the scores uh, ended up like that, Sal. Did you get a chance to watch that one? I, I saw that one in in pieces there, and I'll tell you what uh, it was. You could see everybody responding how one sided it, it. It shouldn't have been. I don't know what they were looking at. I don't know how they allowed this to happen, but you know, all three judges uh, unanimously uh, had it 
with him winning big. And that's not the fight I saw. Yeah, having that's the other I mean, thing. How? They, it's they, not you know, it's not even close. It's not even a split decision. It's unanimously let's have at least a five round, five point margin and show that this is you know, I didn't see that fight. Well, the, the you know the the only the only thing that you can even make a case for is is maybe they're saying that he landed the harder punches, but I don't even think so. I don't even think so. I mean, even listen, I don't want to be uh, you know uh, hypocritical because I'm totally against the punch stats because I think the punch stats are I, I say it all the time they're subjective, uh, but in this case and they're a good you know conversation piece after the fight, and here's where you can say. You know, as a conversation piece, you know, uh, he he out he out punched him. He threw more. He landed yeah. more. I mean, what you know? What fight are they watching? I, the the judging today is 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 it's awful. It, it really it's is. happening, sweetheart. It's happening, sweetheart. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, nonetheless, uh, Bartholomew uh, gets a shot at a title uh, in uh, the junior uh, welterweight uh, division. So we'll see what happens with that. Hey, listen, we're going to take another short break here. Then when we come back, we're going to finish up with the fight results. Uh, we'll give our final thoughts on uh, Jose's uh, sucker punch or getting sucker punched <laughs> by uh, uh, Andre Durrell's uncle. Then we got some boxing news to talk about. I got some emails to read. We got Dax Khan scheduled to come up uh, in uh, about a half hour. So we got a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, Sal, don't go nowhere. Refill your 55-gallon jug of uh, That's what I'm coffee, doing. and uh, we will uh, be back uh, in two. Billy C. will be right back. If you or a loved one have had hernia repair surgery with mesh reinforcement and suffered infection, chronic pain, mesh migration, mesh failure, organ damage, or needed additional surgery, call the Rely On Group right now you may be eligible to receive a cash award and compensation for your medical expenses. Your voice deserves to be heard. Call the Rely On Group to be connected with a personal injury attorney for a free consultation. Call 800-715-4869. That's 800-715-4869. Snacking has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to graze.com, enter the code ENJOY36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to graze.com for your first box free. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-290-8300. Endless pools are an incredible alternative to traditional pools, making it easy and inexpensive to swim at home. Exercise year-round against a smooth current set to your desired pace and temperature. With our new underwater treadmill, you can walk or run without stressing your joints. Endless pools are simple to install and even simpler to maintain. The water stays crystal clear with almost no chlorine. Call for your free idea kit and experience the freedom of swimming at home. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now, or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts. Why are you doing that to my face? I hate you. I hate you. That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. Now back to Billy C. Interact with the show at BillyCBoxing.com. And we're back. You're listening to the Billy C Show, and uh, don't forget that endless pools. Yeah, endless pools, man. Uh, do us a favor, call for an idea kit. You never know, man. You know, uh, it's uh, it'll help us and help you. I, I I think I think I should get one. Just give them a call. One eight hundred nine four nine two 
I'm sorry, 1-800-949-9259. 1-800-949-9259. Get your free idea kit. I think you need one of those uh, endless pools, Sal. I do. I could use one. I got the well. I got an ocean out my back door. I could do my endless swim. Yeah, but there's no but, sharks. Uh, yeah. There's no sharks in an endless pool. You know what I mean? You know what? You're right. There's plenty of sharks. You know, if people had the opportunity to see an aerial shot of where they're swimming, all the the brown shadows of shark that are uh, that are in these waters, they will never put their toe in the water. I don't it's even amazing. like. I don't even like putting my toe in the bathtub in St. Simons. There's so many sharks there. What are you kidding? I it, well, you know, and the inlet between Jekyll Island and St. Simons Island, I think, is the largest breeding ground in the world for hammerhead sharks. And uh, the, we, man, we got we got a lot of sharks here, man. I'll tell you. Oh, they it's must, a shark tank. You must have a lot of construction crews, too, with the hammerheads, right? <laughs> we do. Anyway. I, 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 I've been trying to squelch them. I, I, I went outside the door and said, shh, guys, keep it down. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least the guy's not cutting the lawn like last year. But, uh, oh, some they, other, they, some yes, other, they are. <laughs> some other fi- well, you're keeping them quiet. Some other fights uh, uh, in a uh, super middleweight uh, elimination fight, David Benavidez, who... I thought he looked pretty good. 18-0 and 0 now, 17 knockouts. He scored an eighth-round knockout over a tough Porky Medina uh, on Saturday in Texas. Um, Benavidez is a young kid. He's only 20 years old. I, I, he's still learning. Uh, I think he's going to feel uh, – listen, uh, he works the body. He mixes it up. He, he, he doesn't run out of gas. I like this kid. He's the real deal. Did you get a chance to watch this one, Sal? Yes, and I saw some of the highlights of this one, Bill. And I'll tell you what, Porky Medina, uh, yeah, he uh, he couldn't get past it. Now, th- this was a hell of a fight, and uh, yeah, good way to end it. And this kid's a young, young star, young prospect, and hopefully he'll make the right decisions and he'll uh, evolve and he'll have his uh, feet underneath him, literally. And uh, yeah, he's going to be a good future, a uh, good, good, uh, good future ahead of him. I think what impressed me in this fight was Porky Medina not only is uh, a top contender, yes. but he's a guy that, that keeps coming forward. You know, uh, a lot of times uh, young fighters, you know, they'll, they'll land punches and, you know, they get discouraged when a fighter just keeps coming at them uh, despite, you know, landing uh, many, many shots. And um, I think Benavides showed that he, he didn't get discouraged. He got the right instruction in his corner. And uh, and he finished the show. It was uh, a great performance. He's uh, now eighteen and zero. Look for him to challenge for uh, uh, a world title, uh, possibly in his next fight or the one after. Also on that card, Jorge Lara improved to twenty nine and zero with a couple of draws when he scored a third round stoppage over Mario Barones, who drops to twenty eight and six with a couple of draws. And also Austin uh, Dule in the uh, junior lightweight division improved to ten and zero with seven knockouts. Uh, when he won a uh, unanimous decision over Jose Esquivel, who drops to a 10 and 6, uh, 59 52, with the way all three judges scored that one. Over uh, uh, in uh, a fight that took place in a, a cruiserweight elimination fight, Christoph Lodzarek improved to 53 wins, three losses, and a draw with uh, 37 knockouts when he won a 12 round split decision over a previously unbeaten Noel Gever. Who drops to twenty-two and one with ten knockouts? Uh, the fight uh, took place in Poland. Uh, the way the judges saw it: one sixteen, one twelve, and one fifteen, one fourteen for Vlad Zarek. and the third judge had it one fifteen, one thirteen for Gever. Um, you know, uh, it's the way close fights are scored: one sixteen, one twelve. Uh, kind of makes it a uh, little more towards Vlad Zarek, but uh, uh, I, I I didn't get to see this fight, but uh, I heard that it was. Uh, uh, not as eventful as you would have liked. Uh, the bad news for uh, Vlad Zarek, even though he looks at it as good news, he's got to take on um, Murat Gaziov next, and Gaziov is the uh, IBF Cruiserweight champion, uh, 24-0 with 17 knockouts. He's uh, the real deal. Uh, some other fights that took place, uh, uh, Noyoya uh, Monster Inu improved to 13-0 and with 11 knockouts. Uh, he made the uh, fifth uh, defense of his uh, WBO uh, title and uh, took care of Ricardo Rodriguez. Uh, one minute and eight seconds of the third round. Rodriguez drops to 16 and four. Uh, so uh, that uh, fight uh, uh, took place uh, this past weekend, as well as uh, on Friday night, Hassam the Dom uh, wins. 
I, you know, they kept going back and forth. Dax was right when we talked to him. I guess I was, I guess I was wrong. You know, originally uh, Nadam had an interim belt, then the WBA announced that they elevated him uh, to uh, to the title uh, because they were trying to get rid of uh, interim belts. But then uh, they determined that the belt was vacant uh, just before fight night, so uh, before the uh, bell rang. So. Hassam Nadam uh, improved to 34 and 2 with 21 knockouts when he won a uh, uh, decision over Ryota Murata. Um, he, here's the thing: I, the way the judges scored this fight, um, one scored it 116-111, uh, one scored it 115-112 um, for uh, um, for Nadam, and then the third judge, Raul Caez Jr. He scored uh, the fight 117-110 for Murata. So I look at this fight, and the WBA, they approved all three judges, Sal. And, uh, you know, they were all spread out. I mean, two of the judges that scored for Nadam, one was from Panama and one was from Canada. And like I said, Raul Callez Jr., he's out of California uh, in the U.S. He scored it for Murata. Um, now, the uh, WBA president, uh, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, said he was angry and frustrated about the decision. He said mm-hmm. he personally scored at 117-110 for Murata, and he apologized to Murata and the promoter of the fight and said that he was going to order an immediate rematch. I think that this is totally BS. I think that as a sanctioning body you approve the judges if you're going to make a comment about the judging how do you make a comment about one of the three judges scoring it one way i I don't understand it what's your thoughts sal well exactly what you said you know it's across the board and and you're going to make a you're going to put them all in the same pot or you're going to just single somebody out and do this i don't know it's crazy and uh, to order an immediate rematch, uh, is that justifying of the bad score? No, it's not. It's uh, it's just, uh, you know, trying to make up for uh, an action that uh, was clearly uh, unfair. So, I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a little gray area for me to look at right now. Well, what, two of the judges scored it as a, a somewhat, uh, you know, well, not even. I, I mean, one had it... Uh, uh, 116, 111. I mean, that's not that close. The other one had it closer no. at 115, 112, both for Nadam. And then the third judge had it for Murata and Mur- at 117, 110. So, I mean, I, you know, it, it's, it's, I don't understand. You know, an immediate rematch, fine. You know, it wasn't exactly an action packed fight. But, uh, but what bothers me about this is that the sanctioning body, you see, what bothers me the most, Sal is the sanctioning bodies, they need promoters that are willing to pay the sanctioning fees for the fights. If they don't have a promoter that's willing to pay the sanctioning fees, they don't get fights. It's the same thing that Mauricio Suleiman said to us a couple weeks back when he was on the show. He says, uh, well, you know, we're we're forced sometimes. You know, if if we want to have our champion fight the number one guy, but if they don't want to fight him, Another sanctioning body will approve a lesser fight, so they are kind of, you know, forced into approving some of these fights, which defeats the whole purpose. Not only do we have too many belts, but we have, we have fighters not even fighting real fights to maintain the belt. In this case, I think it was a, a, a political statement that really should have been made behind closed doors. I, I, the public uh, outcry of Jesus Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. And criticizing his own judges that he put in place, I think was wrong. Final thoughts on that, Sal? No, I, I think you're right, 100. percent I mean, you know, the whole thing that 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 uh, took place, it should have been uh, uh, thought out, and uh, it, it could have been uh, it could have been something that was was uh, handled differently and a little bit more uh, likely the course of action to be fair. Uh, you know, with judging and 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 all these things, why they used to make it so easy? They used to have uh, a domestic judge or a neutral judge, one from the country or the home country of where one opponent's from. Same thing for, uh, from another opponent where he they're from, and uh, they had a neutral judge. I don't know if it, if they got to get back into that or to do what they have to do, but it just. Uh, it's just sometimes these judges are so, so far apart with what they see as far as the fights. Well, I mean, they, they were. They were scattered. That's my point. 
you know, one yeah. was from Panama, one was from Canada, one was yeah. from the United States, you know, and, and the yeah. fight wasn't... Which uh, is good. Right, and, and you know, uh, he's already, compl- uh, whatever, but also um, uh, Kosi Tanaka uh, improved to 9-0 and with five uh, uh, knockouts uh, when he uh, um, won a unanimous decision over Angel Acosta, who drops uh, his first fight of his career. He's now 16-1, 117-110 twice, 116-111. Uh, in uh, in Japan uh, as well, so uh, that's what uh, uh, took place uh, over the weekend. Um, my final thoughts, real quick, on this uh, uh, Jose uh, sucker punch thing, mm-hmm. Sal, is it's uncalled for. And I, you know, if if I'm a commissioner, uh, I, you know, I suspend the fighter. Until they get the uncle, uh, you know, charged or whatever, because it's a reflection of the fighter. I, I mean, you can make an argument and say, well, the fighter didn't do it, but his team did. And these teams yes. have to, you know, they have to be licensed uh, by uh, the commission to even be in the corner. They're allowed in the corner. They're representing the team. And I believe that some stiff, stiff penalties should be laid out uh, uh, on this situation. Because, you know, you can argue and talk about the controversialness of the DQ itself, but that's neither here nor there. That's a, that's a, uh, a call that was made by the referee. That's a judgment call. You can argue with him. We can, you know, you can agree. You can disagree. We can all do that until the cows come home. They might be on their way now. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, the, but what's definitely not uh, called for and what cannot be tolerated is the actions of the rest of the team. Uh, this is thug mentality, and uh, we don't need that in the sport of boxing. That's my opinion. What's your final thoughts on it, Sal? 100% correct. This, this thug mentality, this mindset, and the team that's uh, aligned with the fighter, you know what? It's a, like you said earlier, Bill, it's a reflection. And so everybody should be penalized and, and uh, know that if they're going to do something, it's going to affect everybody. And uh, you come in as a team, uh, you're going to go out like a team. And that's the whole thing. It had no business being in the in the uh, reality of, of what that evening was supposed to be about. So, yeah, you got to make it, you got to put the laws in place or rules in place. And uh, you'll probably see some stiff, stiff ideas coming out of this uh, for future bouts because this was inexcusable, inexcusable. Well, I tell you, so far... The only um, the only organization that has made a, a definitive statement on um, you know the uncle of Andre uh, Durrell, which is Leon Lawson Jr., the sucker punch er, um, was the WBC. The WBC has uh, uh, suspended him, um, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, from there. Uh, he uh, was suspended; cannot uh, be in the corner anymore. And, um, I, you know, I wonder who else will uh, follow suit. But uh, uh, speaking of uh, following suit, and I said this earlier, Javonta Davis had a great uh, performance in England uh, on Saturday. But Floyd Mayweather was there. And, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, you know, of course they were all talking to him about his career, and which I think that Floyd needs to, needs to totally refuse to talk about himself when he's representing Javonta Davis. It's not fair to Davis. You know, if you recall the same thing, you know, all you got to do is go back in the history book. The same thing happened with uh, Adrian Broner. They were all tight. He's like my little, uh, you know, son or whatever, my little brother. He's like a a figure to me, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, uh, Broner uh, goes off the deep end. Floyd turns his back on him. And then now there's hatred between the two. Look for that to happen with Javonta Davis. But, of course, they asked Floyd Mayweather about the Conor McGregor fight. He says there's a 90% chance uh, of that fight happening. He says they're working out details. But then he wants Davis on the card. He wants uh, Leon Love on the card, uh, Jay Leon Love on the card. You know, he's, he's saying all of this stuff. But then the killer of all statements, Sal, uh, they asked him about um, Triple G. And Floyd Mayweather had this to say about the possibility of fighting Triple G. Now, he's retired. So all due respect to Floyd, he's retired. He says, 
Kell Brook, fight, and this was in England, he says, Kell Brook fights Triple G, and you guys, meaning the media, uh, were crazy about uh, Triple G. Uh, talking Triple G was such an unbelievable fighter. He's okay. I mean, straight up and down, no special effects, even at the age of 40. And I'm not looking forward to fighting Triple G, but it would be easy. I would school Triple G. I mean, of course, you know that. I mean that. <laughs> what is understood, he says, I mean what's understood ain't really got to be talked about. Like I said before, when the history books are written, when you look at the records, hate it or love it, they're going to say Floyd Mayweather was a winner. Maybe the record books will say Floyd Mayweather was a, ringer, a winner in the ring, but as a human being, he's the biggest loser of them all, in my humble opinion. opinion. As far as all-time greatness, he's well behind Sugar Ray Robinson, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns. Uh, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Muhammad Ali, Jack Johnson, Roberto Duran. Duran, and and I could go at least twenty more. I mean, he's not an old. He's not the best fighter. But what bothers me the most is why does Floyd Mayweather say, "Oh, well, everybody knows I could beat Triple G, so I don't have to fight him." What kind of BS is that? And what kind of <laughs> dumbass fan would believe that, Sal? Yeah, no, that that's typical. That is so true, and. You know, you think he's getting a lot of this uh, exposure and a lot of attention with this uh, Conor McGregor potential uh, potential fight. You know what? He should be touting and saying, hey, I want the winner of Triple G and uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez fight. And uh, you want to see attention and, and him getting some respect? That would be tremendous. Him taking on the winner of that fight. Well, that's what great, fi that's what great fighters do, Sal. That's what great fighters Sh do. Sugar Ray they Leonard wait. did it. You they know, want the best. You know that. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard did it. Oh, Sh Sugar yeah. Ray Leonard came out of retirement and went after the best of the best in the middleweight division. He wasn't even a middleweight. And he no. goes after the best of the best in Marvin Hagler. That's what great fighters do. They challenge themselves and prove. See, Floyd Mayweather, he's not trying to challenge himself. He's just trying to uh, bamboozle his fan base and tell him, see, I make a lot of money. See, because he can't speak. You know, he says, I make a lot of money, and I'm undefeated. That's what the record books are going to Ah, give me a break. He's a, he's a, eh, whatever. Let's move on to something else. How about this, Sal? Go Shannon ahead. Briggs. Yes, uh, yes, Fred, Shannon Fred, Briggs. Fred, there you go. Now, now, now we first, have something to talk about, another subject for, I can't First stand. of all, Fred Zaquendo and Shannon Briggs were going to fight for the WBA's regular WBA right. heavyweight title, which makes no sense because... Anthony Joshua just beat Klitschko for it, but whatever. I mean, for the super title, but uh, the regular title was vacant. Um, and surprise, <laughs> surprise, Shannon Briggs uh, was tested uh, by VADA, and uh, it revealed an elevated, outrageously high testosterone level. Um, and Come on, they, really? he, I know. I mean, does anyone, <laughs> was anybody surprised? I mean, the guy... You know, he's he's whacked out from these steroids. I mean, you can, if, if listen, you know, you don't need to be uh, a, a guy with a with a with a uh, you know what you would call it crystal ball uh, to 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 take a stab at the fact that Shannon Briggs was uh, juicing. I mean, come on. And and to be honest with you, I, to be honest with you, Sal, I think the best thing that could have happened was that this fight gets canceled for some way, shape, or form. Because this is not going to look good for the WBA in any yeah. way. Because you got a guy in Shannon Briggs who has not fought a real opponent in, in years and years and years. And Fred Quendo hasn't even fought in three years. You know, so, I mean, how do they make these two guys fight for a title? There's so many, if, they, if they need somebody else, and I'm they sure they can bad. dig up two more fighters. I mean, come on, right? I mean, I'm available, you know. <laughs> hey, you know, anybody's you know, available but those two. I know. You know, I yeah, mean, it's unbelievable. On. Connect the dots, you know, see where they lie. I can't believe it. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. It, it's uh, it's a joke. But uh, anyway, let's get you caught up uh, with some uh, uh, sports scores in the NBA. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, Golden State Warriors beat the Spurs last night, 129-115, to to win that series, uh, four to nothing. They shut out the Spurs. Wow. Uh, now they move on to the finals for the NBA finals. They have to await the winner of the series that's going on right now between the Cleveland Cavaliers and 
the uh, Boston Celtics. So uh, the winner of that will face uh, the Warriors. They get a couple of days to rest here. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Over in the NHL, we had another uh, series that was decided. The Predators beat the Quack Quack Ducks 6-3. to three. They win that series four games to two. Uh, they move on to the NHL Finals. They are waiting uh, for the winner of the um, uh, Penguins and the Senators uh, in that one. Now, over in baseball, the Twins beat the Orioles. This is like a football score, 14-7. to seven. Uh, The Yankees yeah. keep winning. They beat the Royals 14, yeah. uh, 4-2. to two. The Rockies over the Phillies, 8-1. to one. The Reds over the Indians, 5-1. to one. The Angel- Angels over the Rays, 3-2. Three, three the Braves uh, over the Pirates, 5-2. to two. The Giants uh, beat the Cubbies 6-4. to four. The Astros, uh, all it took was one run to beat the Tigers. They won one to nothing. And the Diamondbacks beat the White Sox 5-1. to one. So that's what took place uh, in the uh, uh, other sports. And we got some emails to read. Uh, so let's, uh, let's read one now. And then uh, we'll uh, put the others on hold and we'll get Dax to, uh, um, uh, he'll be coming in at the next break. Uh, this one's from Jesse. He says, hey, Billy C. and Sal, I watched the Hassam Murado fight, and, and I had Murado winning 114-113. It was a close fight, but not very entertaining, not very entertaining. Uh, Murado, uh, Murata, it's not Murado. I'm reading Murado, but it's Murata. Uh, has lots of work to do. But, uh, he just throws one and two uh, punch combos, no more, and throws about 10 punches around. He had trouble cutting the ring off, but credit to Hassam for his movement. Um uh, uh, Murata's uh, defense uh, if straight no head movement body movement uh, he looks very robotic <laughs> so does this email Jesse I mean come on would you write it with your feet uh, he says uh, he definitely is not ready for top 10 guys he needs more experience uh, but with uh, tougher and more skilled opponents uh, we talked about this fight Sal this was the one we were talking about with uh, the WBA uh, being critical of the judges <laughs> Um, you know, Murata does need some more work. I mean, you have any thoughts on that? No, I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to expose your fighter to different levels and different facets of boxing and which each fighter, like I said, styles make fights, but you also have to take your fighter and bring him along and, 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 and know that he's going to be, uh, having to challenge himself and learn to overcome, uh, another opponent's, uh, uh habits or styles and, that's why it's beautiful when you can see a fighter constantly evolve and learn and and anticipate that he's going to make the right moves or learn from his mistakes. That's what you do to become a complete fighter. And he, he's got a little way to go yet. Um, Jesse goes on to say, uh, Billy C., I, f- I really feel that Terrence Crawford fighting the next top fighters in boxing, but he must move on from that division. Other than Ndongo and maybe Bartholomew, the other guys are not experienced enough to face him, like Juan Carlos Ramirez, Lipinets, Orozco, uh, O'Hara Davies, uh, Eddie Ramirez, etc. Maybe those guys should battle each other for the division. Uh, Crawford should move on and face guys like Mikey Garcia, Vargas, Granados, Lucas, Broner, Jose Benavides, or Eggington, your your thoughts? Well, uh, my first initial thoughts is, yeah, well, you know, hello, that's the way boxing should be. These guys should be battling each other, and then the guy who rises to the top fights the top guy, who's Terrence Crawford. I disagree. I think Terrence Crawford should fight in Dongo, uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't understand why everybody's so quick to force a fighter to move up. I mean, what's going to happen is Terrence Crawford, uh, although his frame looks like he can move up, he still, you know, even even in his fight um, this past weekend, physically, yeah, he made weight. Yeah, he was tall, but you know, bulk wise, uh, you know, he's not going to put on a, any more bulk. You know, it just, I don't know. I would like to see him unify the division, beat Indongo, and then make a decision. That's my opinion. He says, uh, "How about David Benavides? Uh, he needs to work on his defense and not just take shots on his straight up stance. Supposedly, he wants to uh, face uh, Yildrum." Uh, for a title elimination, uh, which I think uh, he would knock him out, or he should face guys like the Deverell brothers, uh, Zoge, uh, Giel, or maybe Callum Smith. Um, well, the Darrell brother, yeah, you know, I, Durrell, I Listen, David Benavides, I think he makes a great point here, Sal. He does mm-hmm. seem to stand straight up, um, you know, but he is, you know, maybe they're trying to get him to fight tall. He is tall. Uh, but I, 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 he is in line for a title, but I, I would like to see him fight uh, Andre Durrell. Uh, Andre Durrell, 
um, is uh, he he picked up this interim belt not in the way that I would have liked to have seen, you know, especially the way that sucker no. punch. But I like David Benavidez, and I think he's uh, got some promise. What about you? Yeah, I think he does. I think he's uh, he's doing all the right things. He's got some uh, good movement, and I think he's going to be a good fighter. I think he already is, and he's just going to get better and better. Yeah, no, I I love the way, you know, conditioning-wise, he's yes. solid. And, um, you know, he, he, he's he got pop. And, you know, he was throwing a lot of punches. It, it, it took him... Uh, it, it took him a lot to uh, uh, to stop his opponent, but he kept coming, you know. And and Medina was uh, was a good opponent for him. Uh, so I, yeah, I think that uh, I I don't know if they should move him right into the title bout. I would like to see him fight one more fight, you know. Uh, but it's funny how uh, you know today's fan, and no disrespect to my man Jesse, because I love the interaction from him, but today's fan. You know, they just don't realize that that's the way it should be, Sal. The norm should be the guys that are moving up fighting each other. And the guy who rises to the top is the guy who gets the title shot, not the guy who's just staying busy. All of a sudden, he gets the title shot. I mean, that's yeah. the problem with the sport, don't you think? 100% right. You know, it's like the old days. You had to climb up the totem pole. You, you're ranked in top 10, top 15. You're looking to fight the next uh, ranked contender that's ahead of you. So you could climb the ladder and get in the position to be considered for a title championship bout. Yeah, well, these guys aren't climbing ladders anymore. But no. I'll tell you what we got to do right now is take a break. Uh, when we come back, we're scheduled to have Dax Khan join us. Uh, so, Sal, uh, we're going to... Uh, uh, we're going to um, kick you to the curb for a, a oh, bit. No. And, then, uh, and then we'll have Dax on. And I think it's easier, and then we'll get you yeah. back. So we'll give you a chance to uh, go yell at the uh, lawn guys and uh, do what go, you got to do. I can do that right now, Bill. You so, have no idea. I'm going on my back porch right now. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're scheduled to have Dax Con. We'll be back uh, in two. Billy Z will be right back. Part of the Billy Z Boxing Network. Endless pools are an incredible alternative to traditional pools, making it easy and inexpensive to swim at home. Exercise year-round against a smooth current set to your desired pace and temperature. With our new underwater treadmill, you can walk or run without stressing your joints. Endless pools are simple to install and even simpler to maintain. The water stays crystal clear with almost no chlorine. Call for your free idea kit and experience the freedom of swimming at home. Snacking has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks, like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to Graze.com, enter the code ENJOY36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to Graze.com for your first box free. This message is for all Americans that owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS. Look, I know you want to keep ignoring those letters, but the problem isn't going away. It's really stressful, and you don't know where to turn. The good news is you have rights, and we can help resolve your IRS problems. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, our qualified CPAs, tax negotiators, and support staff know the law and know how to get your situation under control legally and permanently. Call the number on your screen now and we will contact the IRS on your behalf. Help you end wage garnishments, stop collection calls, remove tax liens, get rid of IRS and state tax penalties, and reduce the amount you owe if you qualify. You wouldn't go to fix your car without going to a mechanic, so why face the IRS without an experienced company that can help you? Let us take the stress of back taxes and the IRS off your shoulders so you can spend time on the important things in your life, like your family or your business. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, call now and find out how we can help you. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts. Why are you doing that to my face? I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. Now back to Billy, Billy Z. Z. Interact with the show at BillyCBoxing.com. And we're back. 
you're watching and listening to the Billy C Show. I'm glad you could be with us. And uh, don't forget, if you're watching us on uh, Holyfield TV, uh, drop us an email. We want to hear from you. We want to know how we're doing. Just uh, drop me an email, Billy at Talkin' Boxing. That's T A L K I N B O X I N G dot com. Now, joining us right now, all the way from his mansion downstate, uh, is my man uh, Dax. Dax Khan. What's up, Dax? Um. Trying to find this mansion that you mentioned. Oh, you're in it. Look at it. Look at the size of that room, man. Come on, oh. man. Uh, yeah, I thought it was an office, but uh, okay, uh, it's uh, a mansion. It is. It, it <laughs> is. It is. It is. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's get right to it, Dax. The sucker punch. I know you and I. We talked about this for a while, and uh, I know you were chomping at the bit before uh, <clears throat> our electric uh, went out yesterday. Uh, and I'm trying to uh, remedy that situation uh, over the next uh, week, but. Uh, um, it was uncalled for. It was not only uncalled for, but it was, uh, I, I hate to use the term, but I, I'm going to. It was thug mentality, and, and I think that, uh, you know, Andre Durrell really needs to, to be the guy that suffers because he's in charge of the camp. When push comes to shove, he's in charge. What's your thoughts of the whole situation? Well, first, you know, the fight itself um, Darrell, for whatever reason, came into that fight thinking that Jose Uzukatagi was going to be easy work. You can tell by his attitude. Uh, you can tell that, you know, the way he was dancing around, he was losing the fight. What I don't understand, Bill, is that at times when he was going down, that Bill Clancy never said anything about when he would hold the legs uh, to stay up. And uh, the... The announced team, they were doing nothing but praising uh, Andre Durrell. And then, you know, Jose Uzukatagi, it seemed the whole time the deck was stacked against him. Sure, I think it was round two or round three. It was a little bit late. And in that combination that you spoke about, yes, that was uh, slightly after the bell. But he was in process of a combination which was very hard to stop. Where was Bill Clancy to step in between there? Uh, two months ago, we seen... Um, we seen one of the referees jump in, betw in between two fighters and actually get punched in the face. This is what a referee does. But, you know, then to sit there and ask a fighter, are you okay? And that fighter responds to you not only verbally, but he responds to you with uh, his head. Uh, you know, shakes his head up and down. And then you're going to sit there and say, oh, he's out cold. I, I just don't understand this. I don't understand the referee, how he's allowed to uh, get away with this. Where was somebody from the commission stepping in saying, you know what? Uh, there's something wrong here. How did they let everybody into the ring like that? How does Leon Lawson walk over there and punch a guy in the face, not once, but twice? How did they allow this man to get out of there and not be arrested? How was he allowed to be stepped out of the ring? This is a professional prize fight. This is something that takes millions of dollars to put on. These are world champions. These are supposed to be experienced professionals, and this was nothing more than a bar scene. You know, I, I agree with everything you're saying, and um, you know, and and you and I kind of disagreed on this the other day. But uh, you know, Bill Clancy, it was a judgment call, and it was his call to make. So, on that respect, we could dissect that a, a million times. I think it was more that he was a little pissed off at at Jose uh, for the previous round or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, the moves that that took place. You know, since we got to see the video, uh, Darrell's corner yelling at him to stay down, you know, a strategic move, et cetera, et cetera. And then to culminate with the sucker punch and, and to watch that happen where he's, you know, seemingly talking calm, cool and collective to the other trainer. Then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, punch uh, Jose. I mean... I, I, I know they have an arrest warrant, and uh, and hopefully uh, you can enlighten us on that. It, it seems like he's still at large, right? I mean, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, give us an update on that. Yes, he's still at large as of right now, and um, the arrest warrant, he's being formally charged with, I'm looking at it right now, he's being formally charged with uh, first-degree assault and second-degree assault. So when he does get arrested, he is going to do some time um, on the second degree assault. There is already a bail set on the first degree assault from the, what I'm reading on the police report. He will not get bail, um, especially because he is fleeing on top of that. But what even is more infuriating, Bill, is the fact that 
aside from everything that, that took place, is Paulie Malinagi is the only guy who happened to make a point that, you know something, once he heard Bill Clancy state that he wanted a doctor and he was debating on whether or not he was going to uh, suspend Jose Uzukatagi, then all of a sudden Andre Durrell had an out. This isn't the first time that this has happened, okay? I understand that in the Arthur Abraham fight, yes, Arthur Abraham definitely hit him well after the bell. It was not something that took place in the middle of a com uh, combination. But, you know, also in that fight, you know, he seemed to be more than happy for over a year to sit there and continuously and, t and uh, get press off of that. Andre Durrell, what has he done in this sport? I don't understand why he keeps getting these opportunities. He's fought nothing but B-level fighters and even C-level fighters after the Arthur Abraham fight. He comes back and he gets a, a title opportunity against James DeGal. They, for some reason, they allowed that fight to be scored closely. You were speaking about what happened over in Japan on um, Gilberto Mendoza coming out and apologizing for the judges. And this was a perfect example. Not that anybody should apologize for a judge, but you know what? They make it closer on the scorecards to make it look competitive, and it was not. He goes against uh, uh, another fighter. I, I think it was uh, Blake Caparello. He looks horrible in that fight. He ends up winning. Then he gets himself an interim title shot for a vacant interim title. How that happened is beyond me, a vacant interim title. That's a whole other story. But then he comes in here, and he's dominating, and he takes the easy way out. And now, you know, when you hear the broadcast team continuously, instead of calling the fight and they're talking about his skill set, that's selling. They're selling this guy to the public. If they weren't selling, they would speak more about the fight than the fighter. And that is one of the biggest problems in the sport. Truth of the matter is, Anthony Durrell, what's shameful is he's another guy. I understand he's had a history with cancer. He's been in trouble. He's came back. He's, um, he won a title. But, you know, Anthony Durrell, again, he won his titles against the very um, shot Saki Albika. His fights are dirtier than this fight ever was in those two bouts, both him and Saki Albika. But he's a guy, again, who's just more than happy to live off this train and ride off of that. The Durrell brothers themselves, they're like a cancer to the sport. They're not the only one, but they need to go. They need to get them out out of the sport and because they they attract the same mentality the ones that are out there that i see on social media saying oh if that was my brother i would have done the same if that was my nephew i would have done the same it's okay for a world champion despite on how low of a caliber one you are to assault a commission member claressa shields who i've been very hard on lately with the way she has been vocal on social media and uh even at ringside jumping up and screaming and yelling because uh jose uzukatagi at one point in time was showboat that was okay, but it wasn't okay uh, when um, anything was going bad for Andre Durrell. And I'm not talking about the sucker punch. This is what is wrong with the sport. How this happened, I don't know. Well, we do know, but I just don't know how they continue to allow this to happen and expect the sport to continue succeeding. The sport is going downhill, and when you have commissions like this one, and you allow them to throw fights, you know something, this is no different than bar fights, this is no different than that video you see advertised on, that DVD you see advertised at 2 o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep, bum fights, why don't you give a couple guys a pack of cigarettes and a cheap 40 ounce of beer and have them fight in the back alley and tape it with your phone, because you know what, the quality is no different, neither is the mentality, and neither is the professionalism of anybody involved. You know, I, just... If this was if this was a situation, and you bring in the brothers and the uncles and the bruncles and all of that, uh, defending their their nephew or brother or whatever, you know it's it's hard to say, well that they were wrong. You know you want to defend your family, okay. However, in this case, like you just made the point, number one, it's a professional boxing match. So, so I, the job is for the other guy to, to, to beat your guy. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that's the job. The second issue, yes, it was a, a, a disqualification, which was controversial in itself. Um, but the point that bothers me the most was that Andre Durrell had already walked over and, a, and basically gave him the okay. It's okay. They shook hands. He shook hands with the whole team. He showed respect. You know, um, his strategy of laying down worked, and he was going to call it a day. And then when Uncle came over and uh, and pulled that, that changed it all. That turned it into what we ended up seeing. 
And, you know, does the burden fall on the commission? I, I agree with you, Dax. I think it does. You know, and I think that by this guy staying at large, they need to make a statement. They need to extradite him. They need to uh, get um, uh, Darrell's, uh, uh, the uncle's home state to, to work with them. He can't be allowed to get the slap on the wrist. I, I don't think he should. What do you think? No, he's not going to get a slap on the wrist because the charges that are officially filed that are out against him are, are serious charges. They're felony charges. Felony assault, I don't care what state it is, that is a serious charge along with the second degree assault. This isn't going to be a slap on the wrist. But, you know, we have seen fighters taken out of the ring in the past in handcuffs for doing stuff during a fight or just after. Now, this was a corner man. This, you know, I think about Riddick Bowe and Rock Newman, as many times as Rock Newman became involved in these post-fight scuffles or these things that took place right after the bell, and I remember Rock Newman hitting somebody over the head with a cell phone, which was, you know, very unacceptable, but it happened in the Lou moment. Duva. Liam Lawson hit, had he, time. He hit Lou Duva, remember? Yes, Lou Duva, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'm getting exactly off the top of my head uh, who it was. I know it was during one of the holy And that's fights. when cell phones were weapons. They were big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How he, how he was able to pick it up and hit someone. I, I, I know. He was, he was a smurf <laughs> as it is. But. <laughs> but, but, you know, that was something that happened in the moment. This happened later. You know, this happened four, five, six, seven minutes later. So he had time to think about that. And then right. on right. top of that, uh, Jose Uzukatagi, he had one glove on. He's taking another one off. Leon Lawson looks over to his corner to see that the corner man cannot stop him. You know, that's a sucker. That's a punk. That's a coward. And you know what? You know it's a sucker and a punk and a coward because you ran. If you didn't think anything was wrong with what you did, you wouldn't have ran. Suckers, punks, and cowards run after they do something wrong. You know, I have more respect for a purse snatcher that goes and takes something from an old lady walking down the street because, you know what? At least they're taking a chance of an honest citizen stepping in and doing something. This man sat there and made sure nobody was going to get into the way while one man had, while the man he hit had one glove in somebody's hand and uh somebody other so he couldn't defend back and the other one had a boxing glove and he was in a position where even if he swung back there was a good chance he wasn't going to create any damage you know that was calculated i'm sorry you know what you're a sucker and everybody involved in that should be suspended andre durrell should be suspended anthony durrell should be suspended and anybody else in that corner that was in the ring distracting other people should be suspended and they shouldn't be allowed back in the boxing ring anytime soon in my opinion and uh, Leon Lawson, he shouldn't be allowed back to a boxing ring ever. And the joke on Anthony Durrell is he is going to fight Callum Smith for the WBC super middleweight title. Unless, and that's if he fights again and he doesn't get arrested or suspended over this, he's got to fight the kid that we've seen this weekend do stuff to Porky Medina that nobody else ever did. That's the joke. And you know what? You're not going to have Leon Lawson over in the corner to throw any sucker punches for you. What are you going to do about that, Durrell? You know, I uh, I agree. I, I think that uh, he should be uh, definitely banned for life. Uh, Leon, I'm I'm talking about the uh, father, the uh, uncle. You know, and I hope they uh, definitely uh, catch up with him and, and arrest him. Some other fights that took place this weekend. Um, Javante Davis. I, you know, Dax. I I thought he looked really good. You know, he was aggressive. Um, he uh, he had that killer instinct. I think that. If, if he's allowed to progress naturally and, and uh, uh, the way he seems to be moving, uh, this guy's going to be a, a, a great fighter. I think the worst part of Javante Davis is Floyd Mayweather. And, and I'm afraid that you're going to be right, that, you, uh, that, that Floyd Mayweather is going to be you know, gearing this guy up to change his style and be safety first. And I think Javante Davis is in a position – to be an exciting fighter that can make a lot of money. I mean, let's face it. I've proved this many, many times. You know, you think of great fighters. Close your eyes. You mention a name. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Mike Tyson, you know, Jack Dempsey, et cetera, et cetera, and, and great fights pop into your mind. You think of Floyd Mayweather. 
no great fights pop in your mind because he's never really been in one. You know, I mean, you think of maybe the, the Pacquiao fight, how anticlimactic it was. You think of maybe um, him sucker punching uh, Ortiz. Uh, maybe you think of all the money he made, but you don't. You certainly don't think of great performances because he really never had one. Uh, his style of fighting is boring. I think Javante Davis has is in the position to... To, to make himself a, a name that carries long past his career if he stays doing what he's doing. I, I think if he becomes safety first, he's going to be lost in the shuffle. What do you think? Well, just as far as Floyd real quick, um, you know, Floyd, yes, his style's kind of boring. It definitely was one for the purists. At the lower weights, he was exciting, as you mentioned earlier today, but as he... Uh, grew higher in weight it was definitely one for a purist but and for uh Jav um javante davis just because you have a title opportunity and chance to win them doesn't always mean that you know what that chance should be taken we've seen that in the sport as well now it's different when you've been in the sport for a while but not with somebody at his level he has a lot of potential he did great this weekend i was impressed but i also seen a lot of flaws and that's not a um insult against the, against the kid because he did what i thought and i stated friday was going to be the most important and that was to be able to deal with the atmosphere and the crowd but also he throws everything with power he's in a tough division with all the hype surrounding him and so a lot of it justified he's in a division that has a lot of iron chinned grizzled veterans that are going to go out there to fight they're not going to box and standing there toe to toe with a lot of these guys you're not going to knock them out he's also in a division with a pound for pound offensive and defensive genius he has nowhere to go but up he can't take a step back at this point in time in his career and the guys ahead of him are not guys you're going to learn from and what goes on in the gym of Floyd Mayweather Jr., we know that everybody there works hard, but we also know, and we've seen it with other fighters, they get to the certain level and they don't improve. Javante Davis, I see him much like an Adrian Broner, where he's going to get so much so soon and have so much success, he's going to be overwhelmed. And when you have somebody like Floyd Mayweather using you as a puppet, as you stated, and a lot of other people share this similar opinion, it's uh, uh, just as much about him as it is the fighter, and it starts overshadowing him and when a young man starts going out on his own and he has no guidance you know what this is when everything really starts overwhelming and crashing down on him and he this we've seen this throughout history um most recently for the younger fans you start with the mike tyson era on up no i i think adrian broner is a great um comparison because and then and then how the relationship between adrian broner and and um uh, Floyd Mayweather, uh, you know, went from he's my little brother to, you know, they can't stand each other. You know, I, I see the same thing happening with Javante Davis. Um, Terrence Crawford did what Terrence Crawford does. I mean, uh, breaks down his opponent um, better than most. Uh, and, you know, right away, uh, uh, I, I think uh, me personally, I said it earlier, Dax, I know you might disagree with me, but I think he should uh, he should go for the Indongo uh, fight. I think it makes financial sense. I think uh, it also increases his value uh, when it comes time to negotiate with some of the big names in the welterweight division. I think that should be his next plan. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? And of course, his performance uh, over uh, Felix Diaz this past Saturday night. As far as his performance over Felix Diaz, what can you say? It was a fantastic performance. Felix Diaz, again, as I stated last week, is a tough out for anybody from 140 to 147, except Terrence Crawford. Uh, Crawford came out as a southpaw, which surprised me. He didn't really take much time to figure him out. Uh, his comment after the fight was kind of funny where um, they asked him why. He was because I can do what I want in there, and he's starting to prove that. And I agree, maybe he should just unify these titles at 140 pounds. I think he'll be the first champion in the sport to do so since Bernard Hopkins or Jermaine Taylor. I forget which one in the middleweight division, uh, you know, back eight, nine years ago. But, you know, also in this sport where it's this financial sense with the mentality of the way some of the people think today and some of the comments I read where, you know, all of a sudden, he needs to jump up a division instead of waiting. He has to jump up that division right now because if he doesn't, he's ducking and he's avoiding somebody. You know, it, it's a no-win situation in this sport. But, you know, one more fight against Ndongo, 
you'll have the people that say stuff like we did great he unified the division that's what he should do and then you'll have the other ones saying well he just beat a guy that Terrence Crawford had already beat at lightweight so you know really who's he avoiding now at 147 because he mentioned the name Keith Thurman and we know Keith Thurman is out with um, an elbow injury due to surgery so Terrence Crawford in my opinion, he's definitely a top five pound-for-pound pound fighter in the sport now. He has nowhere to go but up, and I truly see anything he does from now on is going to be under a microscope because he does everything so well, Bill. You just want to see him do something more special. You can only outdo yourself so many times. But Terrence Crawford, I think, is going to continue to outdo himself, much like a, um, the guys from the 80s. He reminds me very much of that Fab Four in the 80s. You know, what I like about Terrence Crawford is is that, you know, he breaks down his opponents, like I've said, but he's a finisher. You know, he breaks them down, and then he knows when to go in for the kill. And he, you know, he starts off cautiously, but, you know, his fights definitely have a pattern. He starts off cautiously, he gets his distance right, and uh, then he goes in for the kill. And, I, I mean, so far nobody's been able to... Uh, defend against him i i am all for him uh unifying the division and then you know he could basically say hey i've done what i had to do in this division there's nothing else left for me there's no sense for him waiting around for some other young gun to come up then he moves up into the welterweight division he's got some big money fights against some big names in the welterweight division you know and and no, who hey i would like to see him fight in dongo and then go after danny garcia have danny garcia come out of retirement and then, uh, and then possibly uh, uh, go, you know, for uh, a Keith Thurman after that. That that's what I would like to see. But uh, uh, you're, you're not alone. You're not alone. A lot of that's a name that a lot of people have said ever since uh, Saturday night. Danny Garcia is a name that's been going around. They'd love to see Crawford versus Garcia, and then just as you stated, against one of the other names. Uh, Dax, uh, just some other stuff I wanted to get your thoughts on. Uh, I, I know I, I, I could see the, the puffiness around your eyes and, and the, the tears that you've been shedding uh, for uh, quite a while uh, over the fact that Shannon Briggs and Fresno Quendo won't be fighting for the uh, regular vacant uh, WBA title. Uh, what's your thoughts on Shannon Briggs? You, you are pretty shocked that he tested positive, huh? Yeah, Shannon Briggs um, <laughs> on uh, performance-enhancing drugs or anything that raises testosterone, I don't see it. I mean, I, I don't, you know. Of course, everybody else who, as they age, you know, their muscle tone and stuff starts to kind of disappear. Shannon's, ever since I remember my man Lennox Lewis, the man, knocking him back in the ring six, seven, eight times in that fight, I lost count. He's just gotten bigger since then, so, you know... This, this this is a total shock and surprise for me. Um, I have no idea, and this is you know definitely a classic. This right here ranked up with the Thriller in Manila. This had the potential of <laughs> Lewis Tyson. This had the potential of Holyfield Bow. This, uh, you know, now you got me flustered. Um, I'm I'm uh, I'm verklempt. You know, I, it, it's almost a good thing that happened because uh, the fight was a joke. There was no there was no reason for either one of those guys. Uh, contending for for a title and the wba continues to say that they are trying to clean up their titles and yet they do stupid things like um gilberto uh, mendoza did this past weekend by uh publicly chastising the judges that he put in place for the uh hassam the dom uh, fight what's your thoughts on that that's something you do behind closed doors yeah. you know if there's a problem with that then you look into it yourself and then you order it uh, much i remember uh, van de holyfield when he had fought uh, uh nikolai Voluev for the title there was a, a controversy there and actually people were going around to try and get a rematch and that's how something like that should work or uh you know then we have the opposite we see what happens with the ibf they want to strip one champion because he's going to give another guy a defense or they go and they make these interim titles for people who don't deserve it you know, so it's uh, you're right. It is a good thing that it, that it, that fight didn't happen because neither one deserved. It, and these titles nowadays are paper enough. So um, as far as Adrian Boney mentioned before, they were talking about him and Mikey Garcia possibly meeting up. And what happens? Adrian Broner gets three days in jail for contempt of court. I, you know, the sport is more TMZ than it is boxing. There's more news to sit there and make fun of than there is to actually talk about that quality of the sport. Yeah, no, it's. It's a shame, and uh, what, unfortunately. What's a, what's a shame, Bill, is that, you know, the lack of education of the sport overall. Um, I was disappointed that 
the end damp and mirror fight i didn't get to see that until the day after on bn sports on sunday but um you know what went by was um last friday you know we had two young brothers uh former wba interim flyweight uh champion on his way up and his brother jonathan who was uh, you know starting off jonathan sanchez both of them die in a car accident in uh, northern mexico at uh, 23 and 25 years old, and you know what? Nobody in the sport talks about it. Nobody says anything except, you know, the the, uh, the Spanish channels and, and uh, Xanifer promotions. But meanwhile, everybody wants to sit there and talk about stuff like what happened on Saturday with a sucker punch. And, and this is this is what they care about, you know. That shows the mentality of the sport. And what brings it down even lower, and what's really turning me away, is this terrorist attack that took place in London. There's actually been some people out there uh, making these memes of certain fighters, who I'm not going to name the fighter they use because I'm sure these fighters are against it, and they'd be infuriated of them showing uh, their fist dropping the bomb down on these children as if they're killing them, you know. And this is the mentality of the people involved in the sport. It's not what it used to be, and you know it. It's it, it really is. It's frustrating. It's disgusting, and it totally does the opposite of what boxing is about. Boxing is always about making life better for yourself. Um, it's always about you know living vicariously through the guy that you follow, supporting him, uh, whether or not he's um, from your neighborhood, your hometown, your home city, whatever the case may be. And now, just it, it, the whole sport, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is just. There's nothing about it that I care about anymore. I've really lost my passion for this sport. Well, Dax, I appreciate your thoughts. We're going to get some more from you later in the week because we got a big fight that's going to get you lit up again this weekend. Hopefully. Kel Brook against Errol Spence Jr. in the welterweight division. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and we'll spend some uh, uh, time on uh, Thursday and Friday uh, chatting with that. So hopefully you can stop by and uh, talk to us about that, my man. Hopefully, I'll talk to you then. Have a good day. All right, Dax. Take care. That's Dax Khan uh, giving us his thoughts uh, on a bunch of stuff, uh, specifically negative stuff that's uh, uh, taking place uh, in the sport, which uh, kind of sucks. But uh, uh, in any event, hey, listen, we're going to take a short break. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to get uh, my man uh, Sal Rocky Senecola back on the line. I got some emails to read. We got some news to talk about. All of that uh, is coming up uh, in about two. Billy C will be right back. Part of the Billy C Boxing Network. Tell me, Kenny, how is it you rub my belly so fine with that secret rub of yours? And don't even tell me what you're gonna do next. I love you, Kenny Bear. Mmm, tell me, Kenny baby, what you gonna do next? Kenny Bear's old Florida barbecue rub and seasoning. Grab a bottle today. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-290-8300. Endless pools are an incredible alternative to traditional pools, making it easy and inexpensive to swim at home. Exercise year-round against a smooth current set to your desired pace and temperature. With our new underwater treadmill, you can walk or run without stressing your joints. Endless pools are simple to install and even simpler to maintain. The water stays crystal clear with almost no chlorine. Call for your free idea kit and experience the freedom of swimming at home. Snacking has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks, like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to Graze.com, enter the code ENJOY36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of Grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to Graze.com for your first box free. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now, or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts! Why are you doing that? 
That's my face. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. Now back to Billy, Billy C. Interact with the show at BillyCBoxing.com. And we're back. You're watching the Billy C. Show. Glad you could join us. And uh, speaking of joining us, uh, I got my man uh, Sal Rocky Senecola back with us. And uh, Sal, um, we got some more emails to read. You ready to uh, give your thoughts on those those emails? Absolutely, Billy. Let's hear them. Read them across the board. Sounds good. This one's from my man Mitch. He says, uh, Billy C. Stradamus strikes again. <laughs> he says, I love man, you called the Durrell thing. A strike after the bell uh, is up to interpretation depending on the official. Sometimes a punch is uh, beginning to be thrown in motion as the bell rings. Does it land late? Technically, yes. But to me, and this is Mitch, he says, if it isn't blatantly late, I don't call it if I'm a referee. I agree. I agree uh, on that one. He says, uh, meaning if it's not deemed to be on purpose, which I didn't think it was in this case, then I don't DQ. Uh, point deduction? Yes. Five minutes timeout for the guy who got it? Hit? Yes. Here's the key for him. Mitch, he says, you have to watch the second, third, and fourth replays as they were shown on Showtime. He threw a three-punch combination. Punches one and two were before the bell. The third was after. It's hard to stop a three-punch combination as it's in motion. But can you really fault someone in that case? I say yes, but not a disqualification. Maybe a deduction and a five-minute break. I, I agree with that, Sal, um, 100%. But he goes on to say, here's the thing. The Maryland Commission uh, guy covered the referee by saying the doctor deemed Durrell unfit to continue. Watch closely to Durrell. He's shaken up uh, when he's down, but then he kind of gets on his knees. Then he looks at the ref. Pay attention to what he does next. He looks at the crowd, and someone tells him to stay down and let them know <laughs> you can't continue. He drops wow. back down and plays his role. He was hurt. He was shaky. But watch his reaction once he's told uh, whatever it was from that person in the crowd, probably his brother or someone from his team. I don't care if you and Sal agree or disagree. I just wonder how you always get a strange feeling and then weird stuff happens. How do you do it, Billy St Billy C. Stradamus? <laughs> I, it is true, Sal. I did it's say true. I thought something strange was going to happen in the fight, um, and uh, it always does with Darrell. Uh, but uh, but I, I, I agree with... Uh, my man Mitch, 100% yes. on this one, Sal. I, I believe that he should not have been disqualified. I also believe exactly what Mitch says, that uh, he needed to uh, get a, a point or two possibly deducted and give Durrell up to five minutes to recover. If he can't, then go to the scorecards. But uh, he does make an interesting port point that the doctor told the commission that he felt that Durrell uh, was unable to continue taking it out of Bill Clancy's hands. What's your thoughts? Exactly what you said. And I think the uh, definitely it should definitely have been looked at and uh, maybe a five-minute break. It, perfect, perfect email, perfect solution. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. And that's why we are talking about it today. Yeah. Uh, what did you change? Coffee mugs? They're in the chat room noticing your coffee mug difference. Where? Oh, okay. You know, he didn't no, change I got mugs. the mug. I got the mug with your mug. I'm uh, having coffee uh, with Billy C. There you go. All right. Uh, he's got uh, he's got a backup mug too, just in case he's he's done. That's why Sal I got runs more around. mugs. They got more mugs. In fact, I got a mug shot. You're you're a mug. <laughs> you're a mug. We got one mug, more. Yeah. We, yeah. That's a, we got that's another a mug. We got another email. This one's from Joel. Uh Joel, Joel says, Hey Billy C and Sal, I was curious if you heard the news. Uh, about Shannon Briggs being testing positive for uh, dramatically high levels of <laughs> testosterone by Nevada uh, back in the middle of May. Um, wow. It was revealed wow. today. Well, the middle of May was, was, was last, last week. week. <laughs> uh, it was only revealed well, today, which basically go. puts yeah. <laughs> the WBA heavyweight title uh, against Frezzaquendo in doubt. Um, it's been canceled, by the way. Um and, and actually, Joel uh, wrote this email um, uh, 
for yesterday's show. So uh, obviously he knows this now. He says, honestly, this couldn't be more of a blessing. I agree. He says, two guys who don't remotely deserve even a bogus interim or regular title shot. Uh, maybe they'll replace Briggs with another deserving heavyweight like Michael Grant, Jason Gavern, or Mike Molo. He says, of course, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, I, I figured that one. Hey. He says, uh, I'm sure it'll be a major part of the show, but curious of what your and Sal's thoughts on the Darrell, uh, Jose, uh, Yuzel guy uh, situation and the sucker punch. I feel the fight should have been ruled a technical decision and gone to the scorecards. Darrell's uh, co-trainer should go to jail. Uh, all this uh, adds to my strong feeling how the PBC is a lot like the WWE. I hope we never see Andre Darrell on TV again. Both Sal and I have given uh, extensive decisions, our, our thoughts on, on this uh, situation. Uh, Joel, I'm sure you got uh, your answers. But I, I will comment on one thing, Sal. Um, Joel was adamant about Andre Durrell. And I agree with him. I, you know, I, I do think that even though it wasn't Andre Durrell who landed the sucker punch, it was a member of his team. And at the end of the yes. day, I think that Andre Durrell needs to pay the piper in some way, shape, or form, whether it be a suspension, whether he is uh, responsible for turning the uncle over, which I would never snitch on somebody, so I, I, I wouldn't blame him if he didn't. Uh, but... Uh, but but I think that Andre Durrell should not come out of this unscathed. What do you think? I think you're right because, like you said, you enter this. Yes, there's one sole person fighting in that ring. Uh, but guess what? You do have your entourage. You do have your team. You do have your line people that are part of you. They're an extension of you that represent you. And you know what? You've got to contain them. They can't be loose cannons doing the stuff that they did. And this is inexcusable. So, yeah. Maybe there's got to be some type of uh, rule or, or uh, something in place uh, where the fighter has to be somewhat responsible for the antics and the actions of the people around him in his camp. Yeah, I, I, I see. I see that definitely being some uh, something that we got to look at. A couple of notes uh, that I want to pass along. First of all, they're talking. Um, Dax just mentioned it. Uh, there are rumors about Adrian Broner fighting Mikey Garcia in his next fight, but also, as Dax mentioned, Adrian Broner started his three-day jail sentence yesterday for uh, contempt of court, uh, which uh, uh, took place uh, following a bar arrest that uh, Adrian Broner was in uh, that got arrested for back in 2014. So, uh, more TMZ stuff there. Um, interesting situation with uh, Anthony Joshua. Now, as we know, Anthony Joshua uh, is waiting for Vladimir Klitschko to make his decision. I thought that Klitschko had to have made his decision already, and he very well may have, because rumor has it that Anthony Joshua will be fighting Klitschko again in November uh, as Klitschko exercises the rematch clause. But as a result, the IBF is seriously considering stripping uh, Anthony Joshua of their belt and then let Kubat Pulov fight uh, because he was the mandatory challenger fight someone else for the vacated tile, title and the guy that's headlining uh, leading the pack is um, uh, is Carlos Takam. Uh, Carlos Takam has got a record of 34 wins, 3 losses and a draw and he's a good fighter but all 3 losses came against decent opposition so here you got a guy that's uh, in my opinion doesn't even deserve to fight for a title and this is the problem with the sanctioning bodies that's right. Sal you know they're, they're willing to strip this guy when they should make a consolation I think it's better for the IBF to follow Anthony Joshua rather than, than strip him. Look what happened to the WBA. They should rip a page out of the WBA's loss book and see that it was a joke that uh, they even had Shannon Briggs and uh, Fred Zaquendo fighting for a vacated title. The same crap is going to happen with the IBF. I think that Anthony Joshua is the world heavyweight champion. The only guy that can make an argument to say he's a champ is Deontay Wilder. Those guys got to get it on. What's your thoughts? 100% exactly what you just said. And you know what? Take uh, take uh, the, the words out of uh, Mr. Solomon's mouth as far as what he was saying that day. And, and this was uh, perfectly uh, boom following the suit and uh you know you 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 
you got to look at what's in the best interest of the sport going forward. And, you know, you have rules and regulations. Yes, they're in place to be upheld and, and everything else. So there is a gray area. But the bottom line is to strip him of his title and to, to have uh, lesser than uh, stellar quality opponents who fight for uh, some type of uh, fictitious title uh, that you take away from the champion. It's, uh, you know, it, the, the fans are smart. Fans know, and this is just simply nothing more than uh, uh, flexing the muscle and uh, trying to create more, uh, more, invent- more, more. Uh, I guess just rhetoric and bull-, bull that the sport doesn't need. Watch your language. I Watch did. Your I language. did. You saw that? I pulled my tongue right in. I forget about it. You know. Uh, you know, I think that uh, Callie Sallerland has the best answer. He says that, uh, uh, you know, because he's the promoter of Cuba Pulov, he said that they should make that fight against Anthony Joshua either in November or March. Now, by making it in March, he's leaving the path open for the Klitschko-Anthony Joshua rematch. And I think that if Pulev's team agrees... Uh, to uh, wait and set that date for uh, Pulov to fight the winner of Klitschko, Anthony Joshua 2 in March. I think we can all be happy and get that done. So uh, hopefully uh, Sauerland uh, carries uh, the weight there. Uh, Two more things I wanted to mention real quick. Keith Thurman has had elbow surgery, so he's going to be out of boxing till the end of the year. So uh, we can forget about uh, seeing him. And one other thing, Mike Perez, he was a former heavyweight contender. A lot of people had uh, high hopes for him. Uh, And his worth ethic uh, has been uh, criticized and really was the downfall. He's currently got a record of 21 wins, two losses, and a draw with 13 knockouts. His last fight was a stoppage loss to Alexander Povetkin back in 2015, uh, May 22nd. So it was actually uh, almost two years to the day. It was announced yesterday that he's returning to the ring, but this time as a cruiserweight, which I think is going to be great for Mike Perez. Mike Perez is a, a talented fighter, and he was short. I think to go in as a, at a 200-pound weight limit will be great. Here's the thing, Sal. In his last fight, which was two years ago, he weighed 240 and one-half pounds. How does a guy lose over 40 wow. pounds? Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe he's been on a diet now, but uh, if this guy can lose 40 pounds— He's going to be a destroyer in the cruiserweight division. What's your thoughts? Well, that's probably what his camp and, and what he assessed, too. And, you know, that's enough incentive to lose 40 pounds. When you're on a big frame like that, you could do that. I mean, I lost 40 pounds, came back in shape when I uh, went I back. I found it. Me, so. I found it. You found it. Hey, yeah. it's all uh, not, it's not just my dish. No, we, uh, we have some great dishes. You don't have to gain weight eating our food it's, it's uh, truth, no I'm, calories to tell you the truth i'm looking for a cute dish myself <laughs> you know <laughs> you're funny but uh anyway uh, hey, hey it's that time we got our trivia question okay uh, let's now do it. I, you know i got i got people asking me oh what was the answer to the last one no i'm not gonna no. give you the answer because we're gonna recycle it and ask you again but this is one that we're <laughs> recycle, looking for the answer like that. so we're looking for the first person to uh, answer this question, and I'm not even going to ask Sal his answer because it, um, well, maybe I will. But uh, here's the question. If you're the first one to email me, Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G.com with the correct answer, you will win your very own copy of the Title Bout Championship computer game. The question is, what aside from the heavyweight division, what is the biggest height difference between two men In the same division fighting for a world title. What was the biggest height difference between two men in the same division fighting for a world title, excluding heavyweights? If you're the first one to email me the correct answer, uh, Billy at Talkin Boxing, that's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com, you'll win a prize. Sal, you want to try? Well, I'm trying to think who's the shortest guy that Tommy earns for. I don't know. Um, Jack Dempsey. (laughs) Jack Dempsey. (laughs) You are incorrect, Sal. But uh, I know you're going to get that right someday. uh, One day. One day. One day I'm going to get it right. If you know the answer, drop me an email. Billy at Talkin Boxing. T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G 
Com. Don't forget, tomorrow we got our blast from the past. It's featuring uh, Nicolino Loche. Alex Perpali will be by uh, telling us about Nicolino Loche, Hall of Famer. And we got uh, Boxing Hall of Famer and New Jersey Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard scheduled to join us. So uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow morning. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, I'll leave you with this. Ciao, baby.